Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In my last few tutorials, I've been talking about displacement mapping with images and animated backgrounds. I'm going to follow up on that here with some more about displacement mapping with a focus on text and time. First, let's talk about displacement mapping with text, which is fairly similar to regular displacement mapping, although there are a few differences. For starters, unlike images or video, After Effects text is not linked to its displacement map, meaning that the displacement map doesn't move with it, the result of which is that text deforms based on what it overlays. So as I move this text over the displacement map, it changes the distortion. If you recall from the last tutorial, you had to do some pre-composing of your layer to get it to deform in the same way. This makes life a lot simpler. Let's take a look at a practical example of distorting text with a displacement map. Here I have two duplicate layers containing video footage of water that I filmed while on vacation, which only proves that I never stop thinking about animation or work. Yeah, I know that's kind of sad for me, but it's really good for you because I'm going to show you how to turn this into a usable displacement map with just a few simple steps. In the timeline, select the top water video layer and then choose Effect, Color Correction, Hue and Saturation. Don't forget, if you're in After Effects 6.5, it's Effect, Adjust, Hue and Saturation. Let's set the Master Saturation to negative 100 so it becomes a grayscale image. Next, let's apply the Levels effect. We're going to tighten up the dark and light areas a bit. Choose Effect, Color Correction, Levels. Or again, in 6.5, Effect, Adjust, Levels. Using the histogram, I'm going to really tighten up the levels until I get something that looks kind of like this. Okay. Next, I'll blur the layer a bit using the fast blur effect. With the same layer still selected, choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Okay, I'll set the blurriness to about 12. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'll turn on Repeat Edge Pixels. Okay, looking good. If you remember from our last tutorial, you have to pre-compose a layer for its effect to be incorporated within the displacement map effect. So let's pre-comp this. Choose Layer, Pre-Compose. Let's name this composition Water DMAP and then choose Move All Attributes and also Open Composition. In the new Water DMAP pre-comp, let's create a gray solid. Choose Layer, New, Solid. Set the color to 50% gray. Set each of the red, green, and blue channel values to 128. If you remember from the first tutorial, I mentioned that 50% gray doesn't displace pixels at all, so we want most of our displacement map to be at 50% gray. Click OK to confirm the color. Choose Make Comp Size and click OK. Now, in the timeline, in the Modes column, set the gray solid to have a transfer mode of Add. OK. Scrolling through time, I can see that everything is looking good. Jumping back into our main composition, let's make the Water DMAP pre-comp layer invisible. Next, let's add some text using the Text tool. I'll write Day on the Beach. OK. Next, I'll make it a 3D layer by activating its 3D switch here in the timeline. Next, I'll set it up in 3D space so that it looks like it's in the water. I'm going to have to um, play with the perspective here, a little rotation, you know. Okay, looking good. Well, you know what, maybe not. The text doesn't appear to be part of the scene quite yet. With the text still selected, hit T to reveal the opacity. Let's set the text's opacity to 30% and then set its transfer mode to add. Okay, much, much better. Next, let's give the text a displacement effect. Select the text and choose Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. Okay, as in the previous tutorial, I'm going to make some changes. I'll set the displacement map layer to Water DMAP. Also, I'll turn up the maximum displacement value, setting them both to about, I don't know, 20? Okay, a quick RAM preview, and it's looking good. Alright, let's talk about a particular pitfall in displacement mapping with text. Remember in our last tutorial when we talked about pre-comping to extend the boundaries so that the edges of a displaced layer wouldn't get cut off? Well, text has the same problem, and while you could use the same solution we used for normal layers, 
A better one is to simply make the text layer a 3D layer. Doing this expands the boundaries of the text layer. I have no idea what's going on under the hood, but it works. And before you ask, nope, it doesn't work for other layers when we run into the same problem. Otherwise, I would have suggested it before. Anyway, this solution is only necessary in After Effects 6.5 because in After Effects 7, we have the new Expand Output option available for displacement mapping, which, as you can see, easily expands the boundaries of the text, allowing it to deform the way we want it to. Okay, I mentioned that we talk a little bit about time displacement, so here goes. Literally, the word displacement means removal from the normal location or position. When we talk about displacement effects, generally we're talking about moving pixels in space. But in addition to displacing the pixels of footage spatially, we can also do it temporally, or in plain English, across time. If that doesn't make sense, just hang in there. It'll all be made clear in a moment. I've set up this composition called Counter, which contains animation of three sets of numbers counting from 0 to 299. As you can see, they all move at the same speed. In another composition called TD Map, I've set up a grayscale image I plan to use as a time displacement map. There's a black area, a 50% gray area, and a white area. Finally, in my main composition, I have both pre-comps, the counter and the TD Map. All three compositions, by the way, are 10 seconds or 300 frames long. Okay, let's apply the time displacement effect by selecting the counter pre-comp layer and choosing Effect, Time, Time Displacement. Ugh. So immediately some weird stuff happens here because like spatial displacement, a layer with time displacement will by default try to use itself as a displacement map and obviously that's not the way we want to go here. Let's set the Time Displacement Layer property to use the TD Map Precomp. Instantly we can see a difference. As you can see, our top two numbers are still at 0, while our bottom one is at 30. Before I explain why that is, let's look at the other properties. The next property is Maximum Displacement Time, which is the maximum amount of displacement that you want in seconds, meaning that the default value of 1 will displace time by 1 second. We'll come back to exactly what that means as soon as we cover the other properties. Next we have Time Resolution, which is basically asking you how often you'd like to replace pixels in time. Generally, you'll want to enter the frames per second of your footage so that it updates at every single frame. In my case, that's 30 frames per second, so I'll change Time Resolution to 30. The After Effects help files are very specific in warning that if you enter a higher number than your actual frame rate, your render times could increase significantly, so be warned. It makes you wonder why it's set to 60 frames per second as a default. Probably has something to do with interlacing, but I'm not sure. There's very little information out there about this particular effect. Finally, the last property is called, if layer size differs, stretch map to fit. That's a long name. This should be clear to you if you've watched the other tutorials. After Effects will stretch a map to match a layer's dimensions if the size is different. If not selected, After Effects simply centers the map. Okay, let's take a look at what we've done here so far. If I scroll through time, we'll see that after the first frame, the numbers are all different, and the top numbers don't start changing until one second in the timeline. I'm going to move back to the first frame in time and exaggerate this effect a little by changing the maximum displacement time to 3 seconds instead of 1. Now the bottom number jumps to 90, but the top two stay at 0. But if I move along in time, the middle number starts to change while the top number still seems stuck until about 3 seconds in. So what the heck is going on? So here's the deal. We're using the grayscale image to determine from where in time pixels are being pulled. If we take a look at our displacement map, as I mentioned, the top is black, the middle is 50% gray, and the bottom is white. Just like in spatial displacement, 50% gray will have no effect, and black and white will each cause the maximum amount of displacement in either direction, in our case, the direction being forward or backward in time. So that means that dark areas of our displacement map pull from a maximum of 3 seconds in the past, and the lighter areas pull from a maximum of 3 seconds in the future, and 50% gray shows the present. Now, that explains some of the weirdness, but why are the top numbers standing still until after the 3 second mark? Well, think about it. We have no footage to pull from in the past. At frame 0, we're at the dawn of time, so to speak, so there's no frames to pull from before the first one. 
As a result, After Effects holds the first frame until it can start pulling from the past. In our case, this will be at the 3 second mark because black pulls from the past at a maximum amount of displacement, which is currently set to 3 seconds. If we scroll forward in time enough, you'll see that the bottom layer has run into the opposite problem. At about 7 seconds, the white area of our displacement map has run out of frames from the future, so now it has to hold the last frame. One last point. I've mentioned this many times throughout these tutorials, that when using a layer as a displacement map, After Effects ignores all effects applied to that layer. Only the original source can be used as a displacement map, unless you pre-compose. That same rule applies to time displacement, so don't get caught in that trap. You might be wondering what sort of practical application this effect has. Here's an example. Here I have some footage of traffic and a title that comes on slowly over time. It's not the most inspired work I've ever done, but it'll make the point. In addition, I have this grayscale animated map that eventually fades to 50% gray. Combine the two and you get something that looks like this. Pretty cool, or at least a little cooler than what I had. Anyway, that's the skinny on time displacement. So who says you need 1.21 gigawatts of energy to travel through time? Apparently if you're a pixel, all it takes is a grayscale map. Don't forget, you can get the project files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AE podcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.